Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at some absolutely outstanding render and performance improvements in Yuzu emulator that have taken place in the past two days. All of these performance and render improvements are available for you to use right now in the very latest Canary version of Yuzu emulator. If you followed my complete setup guide for this Switch emulator, you will have absolutely no problem in updating to this latest version. If you're having any trouble with running Yuzu Emulator, please do consult my setup guide, you'll find a link for that down in the description, and if you're having any additional problems, do not be afraid to get in contact with me over on my Discord, you'll find a link for that down in the description too. Okay, so let's jump straight into some of these amazing performance increases I was talking about. Let's kick things off with Pokemon Let's Go. So for any of you who've been watching my videos in the past few days, you would be aware that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are now a bootable and semi-playable on this Nintendo Switch emulator. You can however see that we have seen a performance increase of about 2 to 3 times the performance we were seeing in the Canary build from only yesterday. You can see that inside of Professor Oak's lab I was getting a locked 60 frames per second in this 30 frames per second title and out here in the open world I'm getting well over full speed at well over 30 frames per second. In battle situations you can also see that while I am sped up I am also getting 60 frames per second. If I unlocked my frame rate, I would be getting well over 100. Only yesterday, I was only able to achieve between around 15 and 40 frames per second, so this performance increase has definitely made this game even more playable than it was. We have also seen several rendering improvements, for example when you hand your Pokemon into Nurse Joy in any of the Pokemon centers, they are now fully rendered on this screen and we don't get any visual artifacts. You can however see that fonts are still not working at this point in time. You are now also able to fully interact with and pet any of your Pokemons in this interaction screen. This is mostly due to the improvements we have seen in a touchscreen support in not only Pokemon Go, but many other titles. And if all of those changes to performance and rendering weren't enough, they have 100% completely fixed the crashes we were getting in any of the battles, as well as completely fixing the rendering of the introduction cut sequences. You can see that in this battle sequence, they they have also fixed the rendering of several of the effects, for example when I select fight and use Pikachu's Thundershock, it is now being successfully rendered, even though yes it's not fully and perfectly rendered, it is still a lot better than anything we previously had on this emulator. You'll also see that right here at the end of the fight when a Pokemon gets recalled, the game as I said no longer crashes, bringing a Pokemon Let's Go on Yuzu emulator even closer to being fully playable. We have also seen some fairly significant rendering improvements in many other titles, for example here in the Oasis on Super Mario Odyssey and in many of the other levels you can see just how much clearer the rendering of all of these 3D objects has become. Bringing in a comparative image from the previous Canary build, you can see just how much the rendering has improved. In the old version of Yuzu, you can see that pretty much every single 3D object has this weird blurry outline around it. This blur is especially noticeable in areas of dense foliage like right here in Lost Kingdom. Transitioning back to our latest Canary version, you can see just how much of a rendering improvement we have seen, especially so in kingdoms just like this one. We'll be touching on some rendering and performance improvements in Super Mario Odyssey and other games in a later video, let's move on to our next title, Octopath Traveler. Thanks to one of the user developers by the name of Blinkhawk, we have seen a very, very drastic improvement to the way rendering is done in Octopath Traveler. As you can see in all of these splash screen images, they are now being correctly rendered and not completely misplaced and misaligned. You can also see that when we load into this title menu of the game, not only is our performance slightly improved over previous builds, and we have now seen the reintroduction of rendered graphics in this title menu also. When it comes to Octopath, our rendering improvements don't stop there however, we have seen an absolutely enormous rendering improvement to the new game character selection screen. You can also see that the fonts are now being correctly and properly rendered and the character images on the right hand side of our screen are now also being correctly rendered and correctly aligned thanks to these new changes. 
These rendering improvements don't even stop there, we are able to successfully load into a new game and once we actually get in game, even though they are not being actually properly rendered, we are getting some form of rendered graphics in Octopath Traveler on Yuzu Emulator. Hopefully we'll see even more improvements to this game title in the coming days and weeks. Octopath Traveler is probably by far one of my most anticipated titles to see running in an emulator. While I myself have already completely finished it and done pretty much anything you can do on the Nintendo Switch already, I still very much so look forward to the day that this game is in a very playable state on Yuzu. Let's move on to our next title, another game that has taken a fairly significant advantage of the new controller layout screen, ARMS. So as you can see by the gameplay footage on screen right now, we have seen a significant rendering improvement, especially so in relation to how these shadows are rendered in this game title. You can see that pretty much all of the shadows of any of the environment are now being correctly rendered, however you can see that some of the character shadows are still being slightly bugged out, as you can very, very clearly see in the gameplay on screen right now. ARMS has also seen a fairly significant performance increase. I would dare to say that if we did not have to suffer with any of the shader related stutter from shader compilation in this game, it would be almost 100% playable at this point in time, albeit with the graphical glitches you can see in gameplay right now. Having played through and completed every single game mode in this game on this emulator, I have not myself encountered any game breaking bugs that would stop me from progressing or finishing any of the content. Hopefully, once we get the first implementation of the work-in-progress disc-based saveable shader caches, this game will get another significant boost to compatibility. Let's move on to our next game title and another game that has seen absolutely massive rendering improvements since I last covered it, let's take a look at Bayonetta 2. This is another title that in the last two Canary builds has seen an enormous jump in compatibility from both a rendering and gameplay performance perspective. Previously, this chapter selection screen was not usable at all and as you can also see right now, all of these cutscenes, while they are slightly sped up and do have some visual artifacting at times, are now rendered much much better than we have ever seen on this emulator. Previously, any of these cutscenes would just be a completely blacked out mess where you would see gradual flickering and could barely make out what you were able to see. They have also implemented complete touch support for Bayonetta 2 on this emulator, meaning that you can now play this game in a touchscreen mode, as you can see it being demonstrated right now, it actually works very, very well. Moving over into some gameplay, you can also see that in live gameplay, we have also seen a very, very significant improvement to both performance and render quality, especially so in any of these transitional sections. In any previous iteration of Yuzu Emulator, any of these transitional cutscenes would be a completely blacked out mess and the performance would be so slow that you would have to completely skip any of them just to get through to gameplay. You can also see that in actual gameplay, performance and render quality has drastically improved, especially so in relation to how enemies are rendered, how any of the geometry in all of the levels are rendered and how any of these effects. Previously, any of these Umbran Climax moves would not be rendered, basically you would just be attacking with invisible arms and it would look very, very funny. Bayonetta 2 is of a special interest to me because for one it's a very very good game and having played both Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2 on previous consoles like the PlayStation 3 and the Wii U, I am very interested to see what happens with Bayonetta 3 and how Nintendo handles its release. Hopefully if Bayonetta 3 uses a similar engine to Bayonetta 2, we may even get a day one playable game on this emulator like we have seen with other games like Pokemon Let's Go and Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. When we take a look at this 3D rendered cutscene in Bayonetta 2, it bodes very well for the future compatibility not only of this game, but also potentially of Bayonetta 3 on this emulator also. Okay, so let's move on to our final title of this video and a game that a lot of you guys have requested me to test. Let's take a look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2. To be honest, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is in a very, very similar state to what you saw the last time I covered it, 
Performance wise, instead of running at 2 and 3 FPS, we now run anywhere between 10 and 15, and when I come through all of these different navigation menus, you can see that the UI is slightly better rendered, and when we come over to our brightness selection screen, while you can indeed see that the 3D quality of rendering in this screen is a lot better than we were previously seeing, this game is still unfortunately not able to progress into gameplay due to unimplemented functions on the emulator. Selecting new game is either going to softlock the emulator to a completely frozen screen or it's going to completely crash it. So that's pretty much it for this compatibility guide for Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator guys. I think you guys will all agree with me on the fact that this emulator's progress is absolutely mind-blowing and astounding. It is definitely one of the fastest growing and developing emulators that I have ever come across in all of my years of playing and using emulators. If you want to help with this emulator's development, you can find a link to their Patreon down in the description of this video. Please, please do head on over there and pledge to support if you want to see this emulator become even more awesome than it already is. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.